Please take your Bibles this morning and turn to Galatians chapter 5. Going to be looking this morning at verses 1 through 6. Galatians 5, 1 through 6. If you'll find that passage in your Bibles, please. Galatians 5, 1 through 6. And uh, coming back from a week of serving on mission together in a place like Cuba, uh, I can vouch for the dedication and the hard work of the nine other people that I was privileged to serve with uh, to do construction, but also to lead in women's Bible study, lead in vacation Bible school, but also to serve in church-wide Bible studies in the evening, uh, all the while staying there at the church uh, uh, with... uh, uh, shower facility, one, one shower bathroom for the men, one shower bathroom for the women, uh, and basically uh, outside access to all of these things. Uh, God used that time to just mold and shape uh, our team together. Uh, we saw God do amazing and wonderful things, and it was a privilege uh, to be able to serve together with that amazing group. And to hear the reports from Pontiac as well, and just to know of all that God was doing through dedicated service and support either from those who went or for those who prayed or for those who supported these two groups. God is being glorified even this morning. But let's see God glorified through his word. Galatians 5, 1 through 6, please stand in honor of God's word. Follow along as I read aloud. Galatians 5, 1 through 6. For freedom, Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, And do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. Look, I, Paul, say to you that if you accept circumcision, Christ will be of no advantage to you at all. I testify again to every man who accepts accepts circumcision that he is obligated to keep the whole law. You are severed from Christ. You who would be justified by the law, you have fallen away from grace. For through the Spirit, by faith, we ourselves eagerly wait for the hope of righteousness. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision counts for anything but only faith working through love. Let's keep going. You were running well. Who hindered you from obeying the truth? This persuasion is not from him who calls you. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. I have confidence in the Lord that you will take no other view, and the one who is troubling you will bear the penalty, whoever he is. But if I, brothers, still preach circumcision, why am I still being persecuted? In that case, the offense of the cross has been removed. I wish those who unsettle you would emasculate themselves. Verse 13, for you were called to freedom, brothers. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. For the whole law is fulfilled in one word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, watch out that you are not consumed by one another. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. You may be seated. Of all the things that are happening this morning, uh, this also happens to be my final sermon serving as your pastor. And let me say again on behalf of myself and Sarah and Matt and Drew and Rachel, that it has been an honor to serve you, it has been a joy to serve you, and our entire family will always hold Campbellsville Baptist Church deeply in our hearts. You've loved us, you've encouraged us, you have shaped us, and we are different servants from when we came to you four years ago. God has used you for his glory and for his honor. Many of you know this, but just to say it again, uh, I have accepted a position teaching full-time at Campbellsville University in the School of Theology, and so for the opportunity to teach Others who are coming through, maybe with no interest at all in the gospel, but then others who have that call to be a pastor or a missionary or a minister in some way, for God to use you 
through how you have changed and shaped me even to impact further generations of pastors and servants and of missionaries. Just know of the kingdom of God and how he works everything together for his glory. Now, even though I will cease serving officially as your pastor at the conclusion of this morning, um, we're still going to see each other around town. And so, you know, maybe for that initial awkwardness at Walmart and Kroger or Lowe's, it's going to be okay, okay? Because I want you to know that I am your brother in Christ. I am your friend in the Lord. I will continue to be a co-laborer with you in Christ. And again, thank you for all that you have done and how you have allowed me. You've given me the privilege of being your pastor again for these four years. Um, if I want to be known as anything, I want to be known as a gospel preacher. And I'm so thankful that God led me to focus on the book of Galatians for these last few weeks of serving you because in Galatians it's all about the gospel. And I would say when we get to meet the Apostle Paul in heaven one day, the Apostle Paul would say the same thing about himself. This great church planter, teacher, mentor, missionary theologian, Paul, how do you want to be remembered? And I feel certain that Paul would say, I want to be remembered as a gospel preacher, one who simply proclaims good news. And the good news is that God loves everyone, Jesus loves everyone, and anyone can be saved. This is the good news of the gospel. This is what the Bible is all about. It's what the Holy Spirit is all about, and it's certainly the focus of Galatians. I am not going to give you the full sermon today. I'm just not, okay? Because listen, God has been glorified, God has been honored today, and we rest in him, we give God the praise for all that he has done. But I want you to permit me to simply say two things about the gospel today. Understand this, the gospel sets us free the new identity that we have in Christ, God looks at us and through Jesus Christ says, you are my child, you are loved, you are forgiven, and you are set free. The gospel sets us free, first of all, free from the law. This has been the emphasis of Galatians. Paul says that we cannot be made right with God based upon our own efforts. We can't. It doesn't work. And yet Paul says in Galatians 5 verse 1 that we have been set free in Christ, but we've got to stand firm in that freedom because the temptation of legalism is always there. And the temptation to think, you know, I still have to work to be accepted by God. I've got to work and extend effort so that God will like me and God will accept me. Listen, that is how the world speaks. That's how the world calculates worth. God has already calculated your worth. It's through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, and you already get an A+. Plus. That's who you are in Jesus. The gospel sets us free from the bondage of the law. But understand this. The gospel sets us free from the law, but it sets us free to love. You have been set free for a reason. You have been set free free to love. And this is what Paul says in this passage. He says, stand firm in your freedom. Don't slip back into a works-based righteousness. But look at verse 13. You were called to freedom. Brothers, only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. Listen, the way, the way that you know that you've got it, the way that you know you've got the gospel, the way that you know that you've got the assurance of salvation is... If you've got the Holy Spirit's presence in your heart, you know that he is there. But listen, Paul says, listen, it is love, but it's love that works, love that is energized, love that expresses itself through service, through love, serve one another. Here's the scenario. You know you've been set free in Christ. You have an opportunity to do something that you know God does not want for you. An opportunity to give in to a temptation or to engage in a sinful habit or practice or lifestyle. The opportunity is before you and you know that you have already been forgiven and saved and accepted in Christ. You know that you've got that. The question is, what do you do when an opportunity presents itself? And the fact of the matter is that you could go ahead and do it. You could. 
Would you still be saved if you did, if you were genuinely saved, if you still strayed or, or stumbled? Listen, you, you have not lost your salvation in doing so. You are free to do that. But the question is, is Jesus in you? Because if he is in you, it means that through love you will serve, through love you will ask yourself, just because I can do that doesn't mean that I should do that. And as Paul would say over in 2 Corinthians, love limits freedom. Love has the trump card. Love is always supreme. And before you engage in anything, you ask yourself, in doing so, will I be showing love? In doing this or engaging in this or having this attitude or passing along that gossip, will I really be showing love by serving another person? The gospel sets you free so that you can love. Set free from the law. Set free to love. Well, I have to close by sharing this story from, from our Cuba experience. On, on the last day, we had arrived in our hotel in Havana, and we were flying out early the following day. So we had some time to sightsee through Havana. And Mark had mentioned about, about Bob Martin and his love for automobiles, and particularly for 1950s-era Chevrolets. And there's so many of these all around Cuba, and you've seen the pictures. Well, listen, we were able to ride in a taxi that was indeed a 1955 Chevrolet. And I would have thought Bob had died and gone to heaven. And I'm sitting next to Bob. We're, we're, we're all in this cab together, and I'm sitting next to Bob. Bob's in the middle, and the driver's next to him. I said, Bob, when was the last time you rode in a 1955 Chevrolet? And I think you said it was back in the 1970s, wasn't it? So we're talking like 40 years, and Bob was able to ride in a 1955 Chevrolet. And then Bob said, this is the best car ever made. And so I asked Bob, I said, Bob, what, what is it that makes this the best car ever made? And I, I'm expecting an answer talking about maybe the, the engine or the body style or the suspension or something like that. So I said, Bob, what makes this the best car ever made? And Bob said, because I say it is. <laughs> right? So at that point, there, there's no argument, you know. You are free because God says you are. God looks at you and he says, I love you. You are my child. You are free. And because of Jesus Christ and what he has done, he died for you, he rose for you. God says you are free. Father, we thank you today for all that you've done in our midst and for the freedom that we get to celebrate. And Lord, we know that we are celebrating freedom in its, its most deepest, significant way. And, and we understand, Lord, that, that a person can live in America and still not be free. We also understand that a person can live in, in a country ruled by communism and socialism and yet be free. So Lord, there's more to freedom than what a government says. Indeed, freedom is what you say. So God, we praise you today for Jesus Christ and for the word of Galatians 5. You are free in Jesus. And Lord, I pray this morning that for anyone here that needs to know freedom in Christ, that you would stir them up and that they indeed would know that you are drawing them to yourself. And indeed, because it's about freedom, you will not force this upon a person. But Lord, would a person indeed simply open up his heart, open up her heart, and say, I trust Jesus. Father, we know that no one can make this decision for us. It's something that we do to simply trust Christ. Father, I pray this for the person who's never done it, I also pray for the person who has done it, and yet they sense that they have fallen back into a rut of legalism or works-based righteousness. Lord, may we all today celebrate the freedom that we have in Christ. And may we leave this place celebrating you and the good news of Jesus. And it's in his name that we pray. Amen.